Hello everybody, welcome back to another Sup Border video. This video is gonna be all about the Fnatic foil range. We're gonna give you a overview of the range itself, and we're gonna give you more of a deep dive focus look at the aluminium versus carbon mast and fuselage. A lot of you are trying to understand whether to buy into a carbon setup. We're gonna go into that in more detail to help you understand if that is something that you should be looking towards. Remember everybody, if you find this video useful, there's loads more videos that go out on a weekly basis on our YouTube channel. So best off to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos. So a little bit about Fnatic, they started back in 1981, very much with the windsurf industry, and they naturally moved into stand-up paddleboarding, and they've moved into SUP foiling, and they work hand in hand with their wing and sail brand called Duotone. So let's dive into the range of foils that Fnatic have. So Fnatic now have got quite a good size range. In the past, they were definitely lacking a few sizes and a few types of foils, but really in 2023 now, they have a good range of foils. They're all full carbon 30 degree layups, which makes them nice and stiff, but also nice and light. All of the range now from 2022 are completely interchangeable and as standard, you get really good packaging around these foils and you get four shims as well, which you can change the pitch of the back stabilizer. The range of foils that they have now are the Aero Carve, the Aero Free, the Aero High Aspect, the Aero Lift, the Flow, and the new Aero Glide, which has just come out last month. The Aero Carve is focusing around more of the surf freestyle discipline of foiling or wing foiling. Get a fairly good range of sizes in that one, and we've been testing the 1150 over the last few months. Then if we look at the Aero Free, this is more of an all-round performance wing. Similar sizes to the Aero Carve in that one, and we've actually been using the 1250 over the last few months with that one as well. Moving on to the more high aspect ratio wings, you've got the Aero High Aspect, better for pumping or flat water wing foiling, and for bigger riders, and generally you'll see those sizes are going much bigger up to a 2000 front wing. Then Fnatic, I've got the Aero Lift. Now a really important point of this is this is a beginner base foil. So many brands have not got beginner base foils in their range. You can tell it's a beginner base foil because it is a much more of a low wind, high lift and stable foil, and it's much bigger overall, a 2,400 front wing, which is what you really want when you're getting into whether it's sup foiling or wing foiling, something nice and stable with a good area. For you wind servers out there, they have got the flow range as well at a 1,000 to 1,500 with a slightly smaller stabilizer they pair that one up with. But the newer wing as well, let's touch on, let's look at the new Air Glide. Much more high aspect ratio than any other wings in the past. It's gonna give you the ultimate glide. Great for that pumping and linking waves, but it is a foil that will still have a good amount of carvability the way that they have designed those wings. Quite a good range of sizes in those wings as well, but unfortunately we haven't managed to get on one of those just yet, but we do like the look of it and we have heard good things so far. If you've got any feedback on that wing already, please let us know, get that in the comments below. So you can see there's a good range of foils there from Fnatic and them bringing that new glide in there really does complete the range now. So you've got something for everyone as I touched on earlier. You've got that basic beginner foil in a good stable size, but you've got foils that you could easily progress onto and you can go right up to the top extreme more highest ratio foils like that glide to finish off your sort of foiling journey or your foiling progression. The really big thing that I'm gonna bring in now about all of those foils is they are all interchangeable with each other. So if you started off with a really basic, bigger foil and you wanted to buy a new front wing, get yourself more maneuverability, maybe help yourself pump a little bit more, you can just buy a newer wing and plug it onto your existing fuselage. The same with the tail stabilizer, of course. And again, if you're trying to move into the carbon realm, which we're gonna speak about in a minute, you can buy a mast and fuselage, which will then interchange and use your existing wing or front foil and plug it onto the carbon fuselage. Looking at the mass themselves, you'll find there's a few different lengths, and of course there's an aluminium 3.0 range, and there's a full carbon range. With the aluminium, you'll find there's a 60 centimeter, 75 centimeter, an 82 centimeter, and a 90 centimeter. They're saying that this newer 3.0 range compared to the older 2.0 aluminium range has got 14% less drag, and just over 19% weight reduction compared to last year's. 
the carbon masks, you're looking at them starting at a 60, 75, 82, 90, and 105. And you can also find there's a high modulus carbon collab mast, which is an 82 centimeter. The profiles of the aluminum and the standard carbon are the same, but the collab high modulus mask is a little bit more thin down and you're gonna find there's more weight reduction as well. So you can see that's gearing up to the top end performance. That is really gearing up to having the highest ratio foils, being able to put a load of stress on your foil and you're obviously gonna get a stiffer, lighter, best performing foil. We have been playing around with the 75 centimeter mast in an aluminum and a carbon. Direct comparison, which has been very, very interesting. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the fuselages. The aluminum fuselage is available in a 68, 78, and a 90 centimeter. The carbon fuselage is available in a 60 centimeter, a 68 centimeter, 78 centimeter, and a 90 centimeter. Definitely the most popular size in that fuselage range is going to be the 78, whether you're looking for the carbon or the aluminium. And an important thing about that, because that's the popular size, Fnatic have actually given you the ability to change the back stabilizer, to have it further back, to give you an easier ride, to let you be more controlled when you're jibing, or if you want to put it further forward, you're going to find it's better for pumping, going to turn around faster. So 78 centimeters, probably the one that most people are going to look towards, and they've given you that option to move that stabilizer. We ourselves have been playing around with the 68 centimeter in the aluminium and the carbon. Looking forward to diving into that in a minute. Now let's move on to the connections of these foils. So I said earlier, they're all interchangeable. Any front foil or stabilizer can go on any mast and fuselage. It is important to note though that you will only be able to ride an aluminium mast with an aluminium fuselage. You can't take a carbon fuselage and put that on an aluminium mast. Those two will have to work together. So if you're buying an aluminium setup, it will be an aluminium mast and fuselage. If you're buying a carbon setup, it will be a carbon mast and fuselage. But the wings and stabilizers will work on either aluminium or carbon. The way that they have changed the connection for 2022 is when they brought it in for the new fuselage and foil setup is pretty interesting because it looks very very simple and straightforward there's just a slight indent or recess on the foils and three big chunky m8 torx bolts that go into the main foil itself and looking at the videos that Fnatic have been putting out of them busting airs and really treating their kit pretty hard, they say that this is the best system they've come up with. The good thing about this system is it doesn't get stuck at all. You get some Tef gel as standard with your Fnatic foil kits. That goes on the thread of the bolts, so that will always come undone. And because it's just a slight recess around the foil itself, you don't find it's going to get stuck or st stuck around the fuselage itself like some other brands have done in the past. So it's a simple system, they've tested it well, and it does seem very bulletproof. And even the aluminium doesn't have much play when you've attached the foil. The connection for the mast and the fuselage is very simple as well, and it, but it's very streamlined, it looks really smart, and it's pretty well finished off for the price point of the foils as well. Bringing in that price point, if you're looking at something like an Aero 3 with a 1250 and a 250 tail wing and a 68 fuselage, you're looking at £1,148, which is, I think, a pretty good value foil. And if you wanted to look at the same equivalent setup with that carbon mast and fuselage, remember the front and tail wing are the same, you're going to be going up to £1,828. So it is quite a step up in price, but we'll speak about that in a minute if it's worth it. But if you really want to spend some money, you would go for the high modulus mast, which of course we unfortunately haven't used yet, but you're looking at more like a complete setup at £2,300 for that complete setup. Now that is near at the price point where other top end expensive foils are sitting. If you're new to foiling, there are a lot of expensive foils out on the market and it's just sitting at that price point. But if you want super lightweight, top end performance, I can guarantee anything with a better quality carbon, it's gonna be lighter, it's gonna be stiffer, and it's gonna give you that top end performance. But what really should you be expecting from an aluminum or carbon setup? What is the basic differences? Well, a lot of people know that carbon is lighter. Yes, you will save a bit of weight with carbon. So if you're walking down the beach, you're gonna find it's a bit easier to carry, 
and when you're riding on the water, you will feel the board is a little bit easier to move around because of that weight saving. With carbon and aluminium, stiffness is a really big, important factor. You're gonna find any carbon setup is gonna be stiffer than an aluminium-based setup. Why is that important? Well, imagine you're standing on your board and the foil is the only thing in the water, and that mass particularly is the connection point between you and the foil. So if you have something that's flexing around, it's really gonna change the feel of the foil on the water, and it's gonna change the ability for you to ride on the water as well. And that's even more noticeable if you're going for a bigger mast. If you're riding on a 60 centimeter mast or a 75 centimeter mast, you will feel a difference. But if you jump to a 90 centimeter mast and go on a carbon and aluminum, it is gonna be even more of a difference. And of course, if you weigh more, it's gonna make more of a difference as well. Response is another big point between carbon and aluminium, sort of similar to stiffness. Response is how quickly it comes back to its sort of standard state. So if you're going into a turn, the foil, even a carbon one, is going to flex slightly. It's going to respond slightly. But as you come out of that turn, it's going to straighten itself up much quicker than it would do if it was, if it was an aluminium one. Price is obviously something to consider because carbon foils are generally 80% more expensive than aluminium ones. And the last one is durability. And you will find that aluminium masks and fuselages will be more durable than carbon ones. Carbon ones you are gonna have to look after a little bit more. You can't sort of be like me and throw your kit around at the beach. You have to look after it a little bit, try not to chip it on a rock. And aluminium, it can handle a lot more knocks and scrapes and scratches. Carbon definitely is something you're gonna have to look after. So now I'm gonna move on to our feedback on the performance on the water. We're gonna be looking at, especially these two foils which we've been using a lot, the Aero Carve and the Aero Free, but really driving into the difference between aluminium and carbon. What difference did we feel? And did we think it was worth the money upgrade? Our first bit of feedback of when using it ourselves is actually putting the foils together was a very simple and easy process. I touched on it earlier, the connections are very, very solid. Whether you're looking at the carbon or the aluminium, it didn't really seem a problem. The quality of the foils themselves all was finished off very well. Definitely wouldn't say that they were a lower or middle price point when it comes to quality and finish of the product. Jumping into our on the water feedback for the Aero Free. Now the Aero Free is marketed as Fanatic's all round foil for advanced riders. Now it definitely does what they claim it should do, but in some respects it will actually be a lot better for a more of an intermediate rider. It's a lot easier foil to ride than equivalent brand foils. It will cover many disciplines as well, so you can use it for sub surf foiling, wing foiling, prone foiling. In the surf, it definitely is very easy to connect two or three waves at a time. It seems to have a very good pump, and actually it has a not very much drag to the whole front foil itself. It's definitely gonna really suit itself for the wingers out there, surfers as well, but maybe if you're looking to do more extreme turns or turn a little bit more on the face, you're gonna be looking towards the aero carve. Talking about the aero carve, Fanatic say this is aiming for more ambitious riders who are wanting to push the limits a little bit more and do more carving turns. It looks like it's definitely the choice for many of the Fanatic's team. It's not as fast and it doesn't pump as well as the free, but it does have that real carve ability. So if you are using it for winging or subsurfing and you really are trying to turn your wing, carve it around, hence the name, that is the better wing. Definitely both these foils are actually relatively easy to use for what they are. They're not as technical as other branded foils. A lot of times that these brands are making foils so technical to use, but these two foils are a sort of foil that you could jump off of their more basic air lift and onto one of these foils. Maybe if you wanna go winging off water, you're gonna be looking more at the free. If you wanna be more wave bump and jump, you're gonna be looking at more of the carve. So that's a little bit more information on the two foils we've been really using. Now let's really dive into this aluminium carbon. Is it worth it? Pros and cons, everything that we've found by using these over the last couple of months. First off, let's talk about the mast itself. Now with the carbon mast, you're gonna find that the bolt holes are sort of enclosed, so you can't slide the bolts over like you can do with the aluminium mast. Now, the aluminium mast is a little bit easy to get on because of that, but I take it they haven't done that on the carbon because they know it's gonna be a bit stronger having a sort of closed hole. As I touched on earlier, the profiles of these two masts themselves are exactly the same, same length, same cord length, same thickness in the actual profiles. The weight saving, if we dive into that, a 75 centimeter mast in the aluminum, which we're using, weighs 2,189 grams. 
but the equivalent carbon is 1839 grams. So that's about 16% saving there. Looking at the fuselage, we've been using the 68 centimeter fuselage. The aluminium weighs 931 grams and the equivalent carbon weighs 768 grams. That's a 17.5% saving. So the Marston fuselage is looking about 14% lighter for the carbon setup. Now Fanatic actually do say it's 25% lighter, but either we weighed it wrong or it's not quite at that point. But it is a weight saving, but not at 25 that we found. If we're jumping on to the stiffness of these setups, because this is a really interesting point, we did a stiffness test on the mass where we basically bolted them to a fixed point. We put a weight of 25 kilograms on the end of the mast and then we measured how much that mast sort of dropped. The aluminium deflected at 37 millimeters and the carbon deflected at 32 millimeters, which is about a 15% stiffness difference between the two. And we don't really see very much about this on the Fanatics website. So yes, it might be a little bit heavier than what they say it is, but it is a lot stiffer. So it shows you, again, carbon materials in the mast are gonna give you a much stiffer response. Now, let's talk about what that really feels like when we're actually using these foils on the water. The great thing about this review is we had a chance of using two completely the same setups back to back straight away on the same session. So we would just take off whichever front foil we were using, we would take that off and then put it on a different fuselage and mast. Same stabilizer, so we're just changing the mast and the fuselage. And the difference was phenomenal, to be honest. A massive difference, especially in subsurfing in the waves. Pumping is a really good example of where the carbon shines away from the aluminium. With the normal aluminium setup, we could connect one to two waves. And after the second wave, we were spent, basically really, really tired. But you put the carbon setup on and you're easily connecting two waves and then you're going to connect the third wave. And a lot of times you can connect the third wave and you might even be trying to go for the fourth wave. So the difference in the stiffness and the response when it comes to pumping and just being able to get a much more effective pump to get yourself back out to catch another wave was really night and day. Now that's not to say that the aluminium setup was awful. The aluminium setup did work well. To be fair, when we first started using the aluminium setup, we didn't think it was bad, but it was a big difference between going on the carbon afterwards. Suddenly, it's a bit like Will was saying his quote, it's like driving your car with flat tires. You can go around the corners and it will work, but if you had your tires pumped up to the right PSI, it's nimble, it's so responsive and reactive. Going in a straight line, you know, with the drag of the foils, the drag of the mast, didn't really feel a difference. Top end speed, didn't feel a difference. It's just to do with the maneuverability and the response of that mast and foil together, which gives you so much more of a direct feel. Now in summary, bringing all that information together, looking at the price, maybe looking at your ability and trying to understand if the aluminium or carbon setup is right for you. There's a few things that we definitely got to highlight in this video. Fanatic have got a very good range of foils at a very good price point. If you can afford it, yes, go for the carbon setup. Even if you're a beginner, it's not gonna stunt your progression, but for most of you beginners, start off an aluminium setup, you get the same front and tail wings as the full carbon setup, and then upgrade yourself to a nice carbon mast and fuselage in the future. But definitely, if you're really trying to turn harder on your foil, put more force onto your foil, especially if you're moving into the waves, sup or surf foiling or with your wing, that's when the carbon setup really will benefit you. You're still talking about putting your hands in your pocket and spending a good amount of cash, but you're not talking about spending as much cash as other equivalent brands. And we do think Fnatic is a solid brand that many of you should buy into to start your foiling journey. And now with the launch of their new performance glide range of foils, there is a top end range of foils for those more advanced riders. Better pumping, faster wave riding, linking lots of waves, that range of foils is of course out there now. So Fnatic really have stepped up their game in 2023 when it comes to their foils, a wide range of foils for a lot of different ability of riders. If you've used any of these foils, have you got any feedback yourself? If you were lucky enough to use an aluminium or carbon setup, let us know. Let us know what you think of the foils.
So I hope this video has been interesting and useful and it's helped you understand if the Fnatic range is something that you should be looking at and should you be looking towards a carbon or an aluminium foiling setup. Until next time, we'll see you on YouTube and we'll see you on our main Supporter website. Happy paddling, happy winging. See you later.